All right, so in the previous video, we talked a lot about how we can look at DNA molecules that are topoisomers of each other, meaning they are the exact same DNA molecule, exactly the same. They have the same base pairs, they have the same sequence, everything, except they're different shapes, meaning they have different topologies, and so they're topoisomers. And we said that a highly supercoiled DNA molecule is going to travel much further through an agarose medium than relaxed DNA is. And that's because relaxed DNA is sort of like this piece of paper. If you take this piece of paper five feet off the ground and drop it, it's not going to go very quickly. But if I take the same piece of paper and turn it into a topoisomer, or a crumpled up ball, and I hold it five feet above the ground and drop it, then this crumpled up ball, it's the same paper, but it's going to fall much more quickly. That's because this ball is more aerodynamic. Okay, It's able to go quicker through the medium, which in this case is air, because it has less air resistance. The same concept is true of relaxed DNA and supercoiled DNA. The relaxed DNA is all you know, stretched out like this, and so it has more contact through the gel, and so it's going to experience more drag, which in that case is agarose resistance, you could, you could say. The supercoiled DNA is more crumpled up and more compact, so it has less drag from the agarose gel, and so it's able to move much further. And I mentioned that we could use the migration distance of a certain uh, DNA molecule through the gel to determine um, its degree of supercoiling. All right, so it turns out we can, we can do just that. And that kind of experiment is done with a molecule called ethidium bromide. Now, ethidium bromide, in a lot of cases, is used to detect DNA. Now, this molecule is what ethidium bromide is. Now, I just want to tell you this up front. If you ever see someone in a lab who is pregnant and is handling ethidium bromide, you need to drag them out immediately because this stuff is extraordinarily carcinogenic. It's carcinogenic to people who are not pregnant, men, women, everybody. This is a very, very dangerous molecule. Um, they usually say to work with it under a very well-ventilated hood. Um, it's very, very nasty. Um, you'd like to avoid it as much as you could, if possible, although in some cases we have to use it. But it turns out that ethidium bromide, the way it's carcinogenic, is it, if it gets into you, it intercalates between the bases of the double helix in the DNA. And what ethidium bromide does is it always induces more positive supercoiling. It tends to make the supercoiling more positive. And so you can take some, some DNA molecule, stick ethidium bromide there, and it becomes more positively supercoiled. All right, so let's look at this graph because this is, I think, a very good, very good visual representation. On the vertical axis here, we have the sedimentation velocity. What that is, is it's a, it's a measure of the, the rate through which a DNA molecule electrophoresis through the gel. So for example, this relaxed DNA would have a low sedimentation velocity. The supercoiled DNA would have a high sedimentation velocity. That's why it went further. If you're moving faster, you can move farther in a certain amount of time. That's just kinematics, right? So if you are maximally negatively supercoiled, so negative supercoiling is on the left, positive supercoiling is on the right. And then right in the middle, we have no net supercoiling. All right, so over here, when we're maximally negatively supercoiled, we have a maximum sedimentation velocity. Now, we're maximally negatively supercoiled, which really, from the electrophoresis point of view, doesn't look any different than maximally positively supercoiled. They don't look any different. So when you're maximally supercoiled in either direction, you have a maximum velocity, a maximum sedimentation rate through the medium. When you have no supercoiling at all, meaning no net supercoiling, which is like this relaxed circular DNA molecule, you have the slowest sedimentation velocity. So you would expect the, the form of the topoisomer of the DNA to go the, to travel the least distance through the gel would be this one. And then either the positive or negative supercoiled could um, travel the farthest. Okay? All right, let's do a simple example first. We start off with the circular DNA, no supercoiling whatsoever. So we're right here. So that could be, in the case of the previous gel, that could be this band right here, all right? So it doesn't travel very far. It has no net supercoiling. But what we're going to do is we're going to add more and more ethidium bromide. So what we're going to do is we're essentially going to shift to the right. Even if we started with the negatively supercoiled over here and we add ethidium bromide, we're still going to shift to the right. We always shift to the right with ethidium bromide if we're adding more and more of it. You can see here that the ethidium bromide concentration as it increases, um, 
we're going to shift to the right. Okay. If I add a thidium bromine starting with this, you can see I'm going to get more and more supercoiled. I'm getting more and more supercoiled. Now I initially have a hump here and then it goes down a little bit, but in general, it's going to go up until I get maximally positively supercoiled. So as I add more and more thidium bromide to this completely relaxed DNA molecule, I should expect a higher and higher and higher sedimentation velocity. Okay, which means that if I was looking specifically at this DNA molecule, which is this topoisomer, versus this topoisomer versus this one, I'll call this one A, this one B, and then the one that's maximally possibly supercoiled C. If I was to look at them and where they might be on the on this uh, electrophoretogram, this would be the relaxed one. This one might be A, this one might be B, and this one down here, the maximally supercoiled, in this case it's positive, would be C. So I add more and more ethidium bromide to the completely relaxed DNA molecule. It gets more and more positively supercoiled until I get to the maximum positive supercoil. And then they have a higher sedimentation velocity and they travel further through the gel. Another experiment we can do is we can start over here all the way on the left side where we have a maximally negatively supercoiled DNA molecule. Now, whenever we add a thidium bromide, we're still obviously moving to the right here. We always move to the right with increasing a thidium bromide concentration. Now, we're maximally negatively supercoiled over here on the left. So when we say we're getting more and more positively supercoiled as we add more thidium bromide, there's one way to think about it and then there's another way. The first way is we start being negatively supercoiled over here, we can think of it as becoming more and more positively supercoiled to the point where we go from the maximum negative supercoiled DNA to the relaxed DNA, or we can think of it as becoming less negatively supercoiled. Either way works. But when we start with the maximally negatively supercoiled DNA, we get less and less supercoiled until we get to the point where we're relaxed. That's because we're increasing positive supercoils, which cancel out negative supercoils. So if we were to call this maximally negatively supercoiled DNA A, this one is B, this one is C, and then this is our relaxed DNA molecule. If that was our experiment, then if we look at electrophoretogram over here, um, our relaxed one would again be up here at the top. And then we said A was the maximally negatively supercoiled. That would be down here at the bottom. B would be right here, and then maybe C would be up here. Okay, so it depends on where you start here on the graph. Do we start with a completely relaxed DNA molecule and then add a thidium bromide, in which case we go up to maximally positively supercoiled, or do we start with a maximally negatively supercoiled DNA molecule? We add a thidium bromide, and then we get less and less supercoiled until we get to a completely relaxed DNA molecule, which should travel the least because it has the lowest sedimentation velocity. That's because it's the least aerodynamic DNA topoisomer. Okay, so again, the way to think about this is there is no such thing as being supercoiled or not supercoiled. There is, on one side of the spectrum, maximum negative supercoils, and on the complete opposite end, there's maximum positively supercoiled. And we can be any degree in between at any given time. So if we start with being completely or maximally negative supercoiled, adding a thidium bromide more and more will take us initially to completely relaxed DNA, and then if we keep adding it towards completely positively supercoiled DNA. And you can actually use an experiment like this to determine if your DNA was originally relaxed or if it was originally supercoiled. So let's think about that for a second. If our DNA was originally completely relaxed and we added a thidium bromide, then what should happen is, is if we look at the electrophoretogram, if it was initially relaxed, we should see our initial band up here, as we see right here, and if we added a thidium bromide, and we essentially saturate it with a thidium bromide, then we should end up with a band then down here. Okay, because we went from relaxed all the way down to positively supercoiled. So we should then see a band in the next experiment that's down here. However, if we started with a completely negatively supercoiled DNA molecule, then our initial band would not be up here. Our initial band would be down here. That's because we start off with a completely negatively supercoiled DNA topoisomer. 
And remember that the electrophorogram cannot distinguish between completely negatively supercoiled and completely positively supercoiled. They're essentially sort of mirror images of each other, but you can't distinguish between them. But if we started with a completely negatively supercoiled DNA and we added some ethidium bromide, we would expect to then see more and more relaxed DNA, which means that if we started with our negatively supercoiled DNA and we added ethidium bromide, we might expect then to see bands going up, 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 up until we get to completely relaxed DNA. Okay? Now, how could you distinguish then between if we had a negatively supercoiled DNA molecule versus a positively supercoiled DNA molecule? Well, if it was negatively supercoiled, like we just said, and we added ethidium bromide, then you should see a band that starts right here, and then as you add more and more ethidium bromide, it should start, the bands would start to go up to where we see relaxed DNA. However, if it was initially already positively supercoiled, you would still see this band right here, because that's where we expect to find supercoiled DNA, but when you add ethidium bromide, you can't get any more supercoiled than this. So nothing would happen. You would just see bands sort of clustered around here. Okay, and so that's how you can test to see was the band initially negatively supercoiled, was it relaxed, or was it positively supercoiled, okay? And just make sure to stay away from this stuff as much as possible because it causes really bad cancers very quickly. All right, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.